and welcome to my animal print nail design workshop. So in this workshop I'm going to teach you how to create really simple but effective animal print designs to be able to transfer in a multitude of different designs and colourways for your clients. I really hope you enjoy this workshop, so let's get started. <music> Hi everyone, so in this workshop I'm going to be showing you some really basic animal print designs that you will be able to do in completely different colourways um, and be able to tailor them to your clients needs. So animal print wise we have got our cow print which I don't quite know how it happened but it's become a thing. I had so many clients asking me for cow print it's unreal. So when I first started to do it I was really unsure of how to go about getting it really random. Um, so we're going to be doing cow print, we're going to be doing zebra print, we are also going to be doing leopard print and also tiger print. So these are really basic designs and I have done them in their traditional colours. But obviously you can jazz this up as much as you want. You could go neon with your um, leopard print, you could go you could go all you could add glitter, you could do whatever you wanted to them. And a neon uh, nude rather cow print looks really nice. Um, so you could do the white as like a negative space on the nail and then just do the black dots. So it's entirely up to you how you play around with these designs, but I'm just going to show you how to create them in the first place. Because once you know how to create them, you'll be able to play with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is my cow print. So I have done two coats of my white polish. So if we were doing this on a client, we would have our base coat and then two coats of our white polish. And I've not wiped off the inhibition layer. So there's no top coat, there's nothing on there. It's just literally two coats of our gel polish. So I am going to go in and I'm going to use my black normal gel polish. You do not have to use any sort of fancy art painting gel you can just use black polish and that is better because it is slightly thinner so you don't get that raised surface to the nail i'm also going to be using my large dotting tool so this is the largest dotting tool that i have so as you can see it's really quite a large ball and we want that to be able to create the patches of our cow print so the first thing you need to decide is where you want your main print to be. So for me, I'm just going to go slightly off centre and I'm going to go around about here. Okay, so that is going to be quite a large one and I'm just going to bring that out and I'm just swirling my dotting tool to create that really random patch. Okay, so that is the point we are working from. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to work here and I'm going to come down and again using that sort of three point random structure and just create that there like that. So no brush involved, we just want to create the patches. So I'm now going to come down this edge and have it coming off of the nail slightly. So this is a slightly longer patch. And again, I'm not using a brush, I'm just using my dotting tool. And then again, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do, and just go with it, go, but you don't want it to be too bitty. The patches need to be quite solid. And then again, I'm just going to pop a random curve there. Okay, and you can see how this builds up real quick. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do this. Obviously, this would be our cuticle line. So you would need to be aware of not touching your client's cuticles or skin with your gel polish. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one here. And try and leave an even amount 
of space between each patch so that sort of determines your next shape of your patch because we left an even amount here, leaving an amount here, and even amount here. So that's what determined that to go round slightly. And then again, leaving an even amount of space between each patch, and that's what gives us the shape of our next patch. And that is how simple a cow print can be and you could even come in here and just fill out that slightly negative space there. So I'm going to pop that in for a full cure and we are going to move straight on to our zebra print. So our zebra print. Now with a zebra print it can be very similar to our tiger print but you can see it's the same sort of technique but just used in a different way. So like our cow print, with your zebra print, you need three points to be able to work from. So for me, it was this one here, this one here, and this one here. And then it's just all about filling in the gaps. So I'm gonna get rid of my tiger print and I'm gonna grab my tip that I've already prepared so again, this is two coats of gel polish. If we were doing it on a client, we would have used um, our base coat and then two coats of gel polish. And I've left that inhibition layer on there um, because it's not overly wet. So for this, I am using an artisan gel paint. This one in particular is from Nalchemy and this is obviously in black. Um, and the reason I'm using this is because it holds its own weight, so it's not going to bleed out like a normal gel polish would. But if you haven't got this, you can just use your normal gel polish. It wouldn't be a problem at all. You may just find that you need to cure in between certain stages of doing your lines. So for this, I am going to be using my striping brush, and this is my fine striping brush, okay? It has seen better days, but I love it. It serves me well. Um... And it always, it always delivers, she says. So, the first thing I'm going to do is pop in my guide line. So, we don't want this to be perfect. So, you can see there, I was wiggling my brush slightly because I want to have that movement in my lines. So, I'm now going to come from there and I'm going to create like a a V or an arrow if you like and I'm just going to pop my outlines in to start with okay so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to do one coming from the other way but I'm coming up I'm not don't be tempted to keep on going across all right you need to create movement especially in the zebra print to differentiate it between your tiger print so creating a really nice point there and I will go in and exaggerate that again in a little bit but I am just popping in my guides first of all now obviously if we were doing this on a client we would be making sure that we weren't touching that product onto their skin or flooding their cuticle Okay, and then I'm just going to come straight across the nail on here. And I want that to be slightly thicker there. So they are my four guide points, okay. It is now that I'm going to go in and create the rest of my stripes. So I want to go opposite. And there's no rhyme or reason, it's really quite a random design, but you do need to create that movement in your lines. You don't want them to be straight. Okay, and then again, just going to come in here. 
and do a slightly thicker line creating that movement There we go, and then I'm going to just come in here and lay my brush out. So now I'm going to come up from this edge and you want it to be moving across the nail the whole time. You don't want it to be stagnant. Zebra print is really quite random. And then here, I'm just going to create like a curve because it's going off of the nail. All right. And then here, I'm going to come down this way and just fill this area in. So you can really see it's all about that wiggle. For me it is anyway. Creating that movement within the brush to create the movement in the lines. So for here, I'm going to come down I'm going to bring that quite a way across, thicken that up there, lay out my brush, and just bring that to the edge. And then right here, like we have done on the tip, I'm just going to lay that down, do it slightly thicker, create a little bit of movement. And just fill in that area. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with my Crystal Nails Phantom Brush. Okay, and I'm going to fill in all of those gaps. Okay, so I'm now going to go in with my gel polish and I am going to fill in these areas just here that need a little bit of refinement and just tidy them up. Okay. So I'm just using my larger brush, my phantom brush, because it's a lot quicker to be able to do this. But I don't want to make these lines perfect. If anything, I'm wiggling them out more. So again, just filling in these lines here, thickening up any areas that might need thickening up. Because you don't want too much negative space of the white. Okay, checking all of my lines, making sure there's no random areas that need sorting out. And I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a full cure. Okay, so while I've been doing that one, my cow print has now fully cured. So I am now going to go in with a no wipe top coat to give that a nice shine on there. You could do this matte, it's entirely up to you. On the finish that you prefer. So 
so I'm just going to go in, give that a nice even coat. Obviously if we were doing this on a client we would be very aware of their cuticle area and their side walls and obviously capping that edge as well. So that is also going to go in for a full cure. And our zebra print has now fully cured. So I'm going to take that out and again I'm going to top coat that with my shiny top coat. And you know there's nothing stopping you. You could do like a silvery background. You could go neon with this. The, you could add glitter. You could add crystals. The options are really endless. So that is going to go in for a full cure. And our pig has now our pig our cow has now fully cured so you can see that's really nice and shiny and no brush needed all done with a dotting tool and just normal gel polish again you could add sparkles to this you could add different colorways you could add neons in the background the options are endless but once you know how to get that cow print done in a jiffy then it's time to play so I am just going to pop that to one side and I will just show you our zebra print again that's all nice and shiny and fully cured and you can see quite clearly the difference between the tiger and the zebra because of the different ways that the stripes are going whereas with a tiger print it's a lot more regimented in that it goes horizontally whereas this is a lot more diagonal and there's a lot more movement in it as well. So I'm just going to pop those to one side and I am going to get my tips ready for our leopard print and our tiger print. So it is big cat time. So I'm just going to pop my tips on their stand and I'm going to start to do the base of our tiger print because I've done a little bit of a sort of ombre going on and the reason it's a sort of ombre is because it's not straight so I've just added colour where I felt it was needed. So I'm going to go in with my orange to begin with and I'm going to do obviously if this was on a client we would have done one coat of base coat and then gone in with our colour but being on a tip we don't need to do that. So I've just done a really nice even coat of that orange so it's quite a bright orange but it's more of a burnt orange and I'm just going to get my tip ready for my leopard print so again I've gone traditional I'm using natural colors but there is nothing stopping you from doing a white background and doing like a neon pink leopard print I've done that before and it looks really nice with a little bit of added sparkle you know you could options are endless so I've just gone for a really neutral brownie color for my leopard print and I'm just going to pop that in the lamp for a cure and my orange has now fully cured and what I'm going to do I'm going to get my yellow and I'm just going to pop it on because I don't want to do a full ombre with this I just want to do like almost make it slightly patchy but because we've got a leopard print on there a uh, tiger print sorry it's it looks really good that we haven't done a traditional vertical ombre so I've just done like well you could do whatever you wanted you could do it from the bottom to the top you could do it just on one side you could do it as a stripe down through the middle it's entirely up to you and I'm just going to grab my ombre brush okay and I'm just going to pat this color out so I have done an ombre workshop so if you guys want to see how to do a traditional ombre 
then make sure you hop on over and watch that but I'm just using my ombre pro just to tap out this edge of color and like I say it really doesn't need to be perfect or far from it to be honest because we just want to create that difference in colour with our tiger print. So again, I'm just going over, tapping out like you would if we were doing a normal ombre or baby boomer. And I'm just going to leave that gel polish to settle out a little bit. I'm just carrying that yellow up and just tap 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 and now I'm just going to let it settle gel polish doesn't like to be played with too much every time you touch it it constricts and every time you leave it alone it relaxes so you want to let it relax back before we go straight in the lamp with that one so I'm just going to pop that in the lamp now. Meanwhile I'm going to get out my neutral for my leopard print and I'm just going to pop my second coat on there for a full cure. So our tiger print base coat colour has now fully cured. Okay and you can see it's really messy. It is far far from perfect but we are trying to do a animal so you know we're we're talking fur so it's not completely flat so don't panic that your ombre isn't perfect. It can be far from perfect. We are about to put a lot of stripes on here. So I'm just gonna go in with a base coat because base coat tends to be slightly thinner in viscosity to uh, top coat. So it's a really nice layer to be able to even out that gel polish color but it's also going to give us a nice surface to be able to work on to be able to do our stripes. So I'm going to pop that in for a full cure and while that is fully curing I am going to start on our leopard print. So again I'm going to use a dotting tool and it is super super simple and the hardest thing to do is to make it random. Okay so I'm going to go in with a brown. Now, like I've said before, if we used a white background, we could do this neon pink, orange, green, blue, purple, whatever colour you wanted. It's entirely up to you. You could go all out. So I'm using my largest dotting tool and I'm just going to create not perfect dots. So I'm almost smudging that dot out slightly. You don't want to make them all look like kidney beans because then it's too regimented. So these are going to be our main dots for our main uh, our main spots, if you like. So we want to go in a bit of a kidney bean shape, but you really don't have to be too regimented. You could do some as dots. You could do some as more lines it's entirely up to you like with our cow print i do like to work off of the edge of the nail i think it looks i just think it looks really good when your design is flowing off the edge of the nail so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to pop in a couple of dots smaller dots into those negative spaces and I just want to scooch them out a bit so they're not too perfect okay and now I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a full cure 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the cuff around the leopard print. So again, I'm going to use my dotting tool and I'm going to use a normal black gel polish. There's nothing special being used here in this workshop. This is all stuff that you have got on your shelf. And if you haven't got it on your shelf, you can use an alternative colour. It's just about getting that technique correct. So I'm taking out my leopard print. And now what I want to do is to create that outline. So this is my main one here in the centre. So I'm going to go round that, just using a smaller dotting tool. Working it like I would a brush, but creating like a C around that, okay? And then I want to create a smaller C going the other way. So lots of little kidney beans going on here. So again, I'm going to go this way, and then I'm going to create a larger C here, but again, creating movement. We don't want this to be regimented in any way, shape or form. And that is probably the hardest thing to get right with animal print, is the randomness of it. Because the, pe the perfectionists in our nature as nail artists to get things right and even, it goes against all of that. So just working round, putting my big C's and my little C's around these dots, the ones that are coming off the nail, don't be tempted to do them as a full circle, you can just do half of it. I'm going to go here next. Okay, and just working your way round. Again, giving that dotting tool a little wiggle. Just create that movement. We don't want a small, smooth line. We want it to be random. Okay, so. I'm just working my way back up the other side of the nail, making sure that we haven't missed any of the larger dots. And then I'm going to show you what to do with the smaller dots. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my much smaller dotting tool, okay, and do exactly the same, but I'm only going to do them by half. So don't be tempted to do the whole thing, just do half. You don't have to do both sides of the kidney bean, whatever shape you want to call it, your random dot. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some random black on its own just to fill in some of these negative spaces. Just helps to finish off the design just in our kidney bean shape. completes our leopard print. So I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a full cure and we're going to move on to our tiger print. So our tiger print is very very different to our zebra print because we have to create 
symmetrical lines as such but we don't want to be too symmetrical so I'm going to use my striping brush and they need to be much finer and I'm going to start at the top okay and I'm going to create my guide of where I want to put my stripes but I'm going to work down the nail and I'm going to work down evenly to begin with okay so I'm using my striping brush coming from the outside in and creating fairly straight almost like a ladder shape across the nail working in a horizontal fashion okay now what I want to do is to create the interest so this has given me the guide and now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start putting in my V and giving my brush a wiggle. Okay, so wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We can go back and fill in areas in a second. So again, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Lay the brush down, give it a bit of movement. And make sure you finish your lines right to the edge of the nail. Okay, don't be tempted like here to leave that like that. So again, I'm going to come in here, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, I'm going to come in here, wiggle, wiggle. Lay that brush down. So you've got that movement in there. Finishing off those lines off of the edge of the nail. Now you could leave it like this, but it is super duper basic. You don't you don't want to leave it like this. You've got a you've got to add a bit of interest make it look a little bit more authentic so what we're going to do i'm just going to fill that in there we're going to go in between and we're going to make some of these lines come back on themselves so i hope that makes sense so this first top one i'm just going to put in a wiggly line and I'm going to start from the centre and wiggle that out. So the reason I started in the centre is because I want to taper it out. I don't want a straight solid line on there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this back on itself. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to wiggle that out that way but still in a horizontal fashion so I'm going to again bring this one back but I'm not going to join it because I do not want it to look like zebra print can you see the difference now okay so again i'm going to create a fork around this one And then I'm going to join it there and bring it back on itself. Again, giving my brush that movement, almost, you know, letting it do the work for me. Tapering out those points where I need to. Pull this out here. 
Now this one I'm going to bring back on itself, so I'm going to taper it out that way first. I'm just going to define that a little bit more. Pulling it back, but not bringing it off the nail. Now I'm going to come up this way. And again, there we go, that's that one. Now if you feel you need a little bit of a random like we did at the top, just fill space again, start from the centre, but keep that movement. We don't want to make this perfect in any way shape or form so for this one I'm going to bring it back up this way and then right at the bottom I'm just going to go across that tip can you see now why you don't have to worry too much about your ombre you want that difference in colour, but by no means does it have to be perfect. Because we've put loads of stripes. Okay, so that is now going to go in the lamp for a full cure. And while that one's in there, we are going to top coat our leopard print. So again, I'm going to use a no wipe top coat just because I love the shine. And I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a full cure. And our tiger print has now finished and you can see why I use that yellow in the way that I did because it almost creates more movement in the print you don't want that regimented you don't want it straight across the middle you don't want it straight down the side so I have shiny top coated this one And also, because we base coated in between our colour, you've almost got a little bit of depth to it as well because the stripes are sat on top of that base coat. So you can see down here, we've got that little bit, if I just angle it that way, you've got that little bit of depth to it because the stripes are sat on top of that base coat. So I'm going to pop that one in for a full cure. And I'm going to grab these and show you the finished result. So we have got our leopard print. We have got our very basic cow print, but super effective. I love the cow print. Um, we have also got our zebra print. And we are just waiting on our tiger print to come out of the lamp. Okay, so my tiger print has now fully cured and you can see there it, it's got a really nice almost 3D effect to it which is really cool because we did that base coat on top of our colour polish. So there you have it, we have got our cow print, our zebra print, our leopard print and our tiger print super super easy designs um, but if you don't know the little tips and tricks for example of how to get your zebra to look different to a tiger then now you know so feel free to go away have a play feel free also to share any of your work on the workshop group if you have any problems feel free to pm me on facebook and i'll see you all soon
So that completes my animal print design workshop. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this workshop and if you did please make sure you click the like button and if you want to see any future workshops please make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.